Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal and we finally have it, the full reveal of Phantom Liberty expansion that is coming September 26 this year, giving us, as they say, a new spy thriller adventure, where we return as cyber enhanced mercenary V and embark on high stakes mission of espionage and intrigue to save the new United States President Rosalind Myers. Here we will also visit the much anticipated district of Dogtown that will be the most dangerous one yet. With this, they also posted a new trailer along with some images that we are going to go through and analyze. Besides that, we have a dossier of all of the major characters we will visit, like Rosalind Myers that we saw a rework from the original Cyberpunk, then Songbird who is a talented netrunner and President Myers' right hand. We do remember her from before because her placeholder model was in the files already. Besides her, we also have Solomon Reed that we know already from the teaser trailers, a veteran FIA agent who was already involved in lots of uh, government espionage missions. He is also a highly loyal to the United States and FIA in general. Then Alex, a former Braindance actress. She was also recruited in the agency through Reed. And guess what? She's also a shapeshifter, as we can see in one of these segments of the trailer. Very cool indeed that they are introduced into 2077, or well, the game. We also finally found out who the character from the teaser was. This is Colonel Hansen, who rules Dogtown District with an iron fist. As it says on the website, he carved out this patch of land for himself during the Unification War that I'm going to talk about more in my future lore videos, and I did talk about it before. And he also intends to keep it with the help of his loyal Barghest soldiers, a very nice easter egg from the Witcher Barghest dogs. Even the color palette actually matches their aura, which is very cool. Interesting enough, Hansen, even though has a military background, doesn't favor only violence as solution. His keen intellect and strategic foresight make him a formidable foe, which is expected because honestly ruling a whole district is not something just anyone can achieve. Going back to the expansion itself, it will cost $29.99 euros or well your region equivalent and you can pre-order right now, I mean you can use my affiliate link down below please to help out the channel with no additional cost. Of course, as it was before with the original game, there are pre-order bonuses like this Quadra Sport R7 Vigilante. When expansion actually launches, this car will be available, so nothing before that, even if you pre-order, so don't think that. And it looks like a very cool mix of 9060 Charger brought into 2077, especially now that it is confirmed and we know that some vehicles will have included weapon systems. Yes, I'm talking machine guns at the front. Of course, with the new vehicle combat system that will be added in the next patch 1.7, you will be able to actively shoot from the car, just like in the mod I'm showing you right now. And police system is revised as well to be like the mods themselves, where police will spawn in vehicles and of course max stack will arrive as you get more stars. Melee system was also revised as you can now also initiate finishers once the enemy is at low health, which makes melee combat so much quicker and cooler overall, making you much more mobile than you were before. Plus now when you defend with a bleed, you will see bullets bouncing off, yes, very cool. Expansion will also have a new skill tree that we can invest in, but no further details were on that yet, but don't worry, that will probably come as we're getting closer to the expansion. Besides that, for people who register for My Rewards, which you need to connect your GOG account, you will get Rarog West of Red Rebels MC of Nightclub, Wild Hunt Jacket, Gwynblade Witcher Sword, Scorch Weapon and the Gwent T-shirt. Also, the expansion is coming out only for PC and current gen consoles. If you were not following the news from before, sadly, last gen was completely cut from the support overall. Now, let's go back to the trailer because there is a lot to learn here. Initially, we have this beautiful opening of Night City, which of course looks very nice in overdrive mode for those who can run it. The story is set during the main story, it seems, with V and Johnny still not going through the whole ending. And also, it seems that finishing Phantom Liberty 
gives a whole new ending to the base game, but we will talk about that in a second. Because Space Force One carrying President Myers of the United States crashes into Dogtown, and from the footage uh, media outlets were showing and from the teaser trailer, we do know that it was actually shot down by rockets from Dogtown. So it might be either Hansen who is doing it, but of course, this wouldn't really fit his MO, but we don't know the entire story yet. But of course, Songbird in the trailer does say he has a thousand and a one reason to keep her hostage, so if this was his plan, then things are definitely going to go haywire. Because of that, we get contacted by Songbird, who tells us she can find a cure for us, but we have to go and save the president for it. So, this is something that people also have been mentioning before, like if you know that film Escape from New York, eh, there are some parallels which we can maybe, you know, draw here. And then, of course, Sleeper cells activate, which are basically agents or assets you use when you need them. In this case, it's to save, well, the president. Also, it does seem Songbird contacts us with some type of engram or hologram we can see, since I doubt she's just an engram. And because she does disappear, people assume she is an, another engram that we are going to have. No, Johnny is going to be that. She is going to be just through this hologram because she is most likely hacking us so we can see her. This wouldn't really be a surprise in this universe. We also see uh, the goons from Dogtown in their bright yellow colors. Like I said, very cool design going from that Witcher Bargas uh, stuff and their overall color palette. And I just wanted to pause the scene because this is very cool. It does also seem that those sleeper agents were, you know, down for a very long time because Alex says they are bringing us back and she does work as a bartender undercover, which is where we will meet her with Solomon most likely. I'm not sure if she is going to be a bartender in Dogtown or just Night City in general like other district, but I think maybe Dogtown because she is going to be like playing undercover. We can also see the entrance to the stadium here, a lot of corporations and company logos, a uh, very interesting choice for, a, for an entrance, but yeah, this is going to be that revised zone overall, and it says welcome to K9 sign. There will be infiltration missions, of course, which we can see by the suit we are wearing, and gloves as well. I do wonder if maybe the suit has some abilities, like cloak, or it might be just the usual wetsuit, because we are arriving from water, most likely as we are infiltrating into the district or already within it. Next scenes are from the opening, of course, once we make our way to Space Force 1, so there will be an escort moment, most likely this is even before we meet Solomon. Also, speaking of missions, there are going to be courier missions, there are going to be side gigs and of course some, you know, side missions besides the main story, but I'm very interested to hear what those courier missions are going to be, because there is a mod which actually does that, like you take a package from one side to another, but I think this is, well, going to be a bit more nuanced, and I do hope those missions are either repeatable or something like it, because it really helps afterwards once you finish everything, like, just to have something to do. Also, look at this new gun skin, looks nice, and I hope this will be a special weapon, maybe from Rosalind and not a regular one, but, you know, we shall see. One of the coolest new moments is this huge robot that activates itself, and we have to run away from it. I do hope there is going to be a boss battle here with this, though, reminds me a bit of Ghost in the Shell, you know, one fight there, which I'm not going to spoil, but it's from the original film, and um, having this sort of a fight within cyberpunk video game, definitely a big plus, if it happens. Robot was under a sheet though, so I wonder if Hansen activated it, or maybe it had some auto-activation mode when V and Rosalind arrived, because it really wasn't looking like it was there with a the plan. Then a better look of the district, pyramid in the background looks nice, and it seems that this area over there would be the most frequent place we are going to visit. And besides the usual shooting, we will have some infiltration moments like this, where for example with Songbird and Solomon, we are in this casino. I mean, it would be cool if we also had a way to maybe play cards or roulette, but one can dream, maybe though. And as media also said, like, it does seem this expansion so far, at least what they played, is going to be heavily RPG, you know, uh, leaning on that uh, dialogue side more than fighting, so I hope that's going to be really nice because we can make more decisions than we didn't really or couldn't make in the base game. 
also a look at the new weapon that um, Alex is holding and it seems there are some trust issues or maybe she was vetting him or something like that but who knows. Then we have a moment of Songbird swearing loyalty to Rosalind even though I'm not sure why is she doing it here because she's already the right hand so maybe this could be something related to this mission who knows but of course I do hope that um, we are going to be able to as I say be a lot more dynamic with our decisions and how we handle certain situations here. And also Solomon for some reason does not trust Songbird all that much, maybe there is some history there of course, but we'll find all of that within the game itself. And we also get a badge to work with and not just that, but also District will span into the Badlands or well, there is going to be maybe some new area in the Badlands because we are crossing some border, I think this could be the city border itself, so I do hope they actually activate that part of the Badlands a little bit more. Max Stack will be involved as well, to what extent who knows, but we did uh, do something that we are, you know, kicked in the face, could be at the beginning of like the explosion after the crash and everything, because I doubt Max Stack will enter Dogtown just like that. Songbird is also heavily borged, you can see a Militech cyberware she is wearing, plus the bracelet on V, so yeah, definitely some high class infiltration mission with some of the clothing we are gonna be wearing, there's maybe something similar to Konpeki Plaza. And a better look at the new pistol, this will be great for stealth builds. Then we see this short fight between us and Hansen, I do think this is some early fight, especially how easily we are overpowered, but again, you know, this could be a moment maybe from Endgame, but I doubt CDPR is going to include that whatsoever in the trailer. Also a max stack van ramming into an obstacle, maybe we even have, you know, some moment with max stack, maybe we call them during a mission, maybe this is another moment before we get hit in the face, so this could be actually a part of that scene, who knows, but we also have a moment of a helicopter crashing, so whatever happens here in this expansion, it seems it is going to be big and is going to involve, well, as we do know, the president of New USA, which by itself is going to be interesting what happens with the military when the president is a hostage uh, bad things can happen also one of my favorite moments is this area right here could be biotechnic related but i like the general vibe and the location design this moment is most likely related to that party we are attending might be a part of some show where you know we get to see but we'll find out in september obviously but i doubt this is going to be something besides a show or a concert. And for the end, let's go through some of the changes with system requirements. So first off, support for hard drives is going out the window, and so far they will only support it for SSDs. Game will still run if you have a hard drive, but it won't be tested anymore. This is mostly due to loading everything in. That's also one of the reasons previous gen is cut. Generally loading on hard drives, unless you have maybe Western Digital Black, disk um, memory speed is not the greatest with them and even they tend to be slow right now which is you know something i expected to happen like two three years ago but yes it's finally catching up right now where more games are just going to drop hard drives and that's it now of course this doesn't mean that you won't be able to run the game if you don't have an ssd so if you have a hard drive you can still run the game but it means they won't be testing any support for it or won't be testing how it runs so now the minimum requirement for 1080p 30 frames is core i7 6700 or ryzen 5 1600 for gpu you will need gtx 1060 or radeon rx 580 with 12 gigs of ram and 70 gigs of hard drive or well ssd storage so yes we also know the size of the expansion i believe blood and wine was around 30 40 gigs so this is definitely big but for ray tracing minimum you will need i7 9700 or ryzen 5 5600 with rtx 2060 or radeon rx 68 100 XT. If you have Intel GPU, then Arc A750 with 16 gigs of RAM. Of course, for overdrive, well, yeah, this is a lot, but you know, good thing DLSS exists, even for a bit. Besides that, the game is getting Ukrainian localization, that will be a part of the main game, so no need to buy expansion for it. And some of the things we can see from these screenshots is, well, very beautiful um, location design. I do like it. 
it's very dark it's actually much more darker than i expected it to be especially considering like the world of cyberpunk is dark in general but um this looks like a proper um combat zone in general and that's what they were kind of going for here which is uh, gives out a very nice vibe uh, ui has seen it seems uh, revisions basically this is cyberpunk 2.0 they revised most of the systems from the ground up again and yes that's why i named this video cyberpunk 2.0 because ultimately this is that and this is that fully now cutting out previous gen and focusing everything you have on this this is also the last project in Red Engine. After this, they're switching to the next Witcher game and with it to Unreal Engine. So yes, Phantom Liberty is also a farewell to Red Engine that we know from The Witcher 2, Witcher 3 and now Cyberpunk 2077. And this is everything so far. I will have more lore videos and analysis videos coming in the next uh, few days. Of course, I have to finish uh, Starfield as well. Definitely stay tuned for that and let me know down below. What do you think about all of this? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I'm very interested to hear your opinions on this. If you enjoyed the video, click that like and subscribe button for more, as well as join us on Twitter and Discord to continue discussion there. Huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. And if you wanted to support the channel in an extra way, join our Patreon, YouTube, or as I said, use my GOG link uh, in the case you want to pre-order with no additional cost. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone. Bye bye.